Hello everybody, this is Vincent from Affiliate Team.io and this video is about custom fields and field groups. So let's start with a definition. What is a custom field and a field group? So in custom fields you can collect specific product attributes in a so-called field group. And after defining a field group, the attributes will be displayed on your product page and you can fill them in with values. So let's just take an example, digital cameras. Let's just think of a free few attributes that could be defined in a field group. So for example, for digital cameras, we could take megapixel, optical zoom, and the display size. And they could be collected inside a field group called digital camera attributes. So now let's talk about the difference between custom field and field groups and the other technology we use, which is taxonomies. So taxonomies are attributes with a high search volume. So for example, a brand or a type of product. And in that case, you should not use um, custom fields, but actually the taxonomy. In addition, archives are created for taxonomies, uh, which again can be accessed by the user. So automatically you will find on your front and on your uh, website, a, an archive created for that taxonomy. This is not the case for custom fields. Please take a look at our taxonomy video to understand the concept of taxonomies better. So now let's think about where do we actually use field groups? So field groups can be displayed in comparison tables on your landing page and give the user a comprehensive overview of the promoted products. It can also be used um, for the product filter. So if the customer has a filter, for example, in this sidebar or on the landing page, he can um, choose specific values for the attributes you collected inside a field group. So for example, um, he can filter for the price or I don't know, for uh, megapixels in the example of digital cameras. And of course, um, field groups are also displayed on the single product page. So you will always find um, the field groups next uh, to the picture of your product on the single product page. So let's start creating our first field group. We go to custom fields, field groups, and right now there is no field group yet because we didn't create one. So let's click add new. We have to choose a name and we're going to call this monitor attributes and we're going to click publish. So let's start adding some fields to our field group. So we're going to click add field and we will start with the color of the monitor. So let's give it the field label color. And now we have the field label and the field name. So as you can see, it was already automatically filled in by our software. So it's just going to take the name you have and put it in a comprehensive format for the database. So it just took away the capital letter. And also if you have a blank, it will create an underscore, etc. So let's see what kind of field type we want. In that case, we just want text. So in addition to that, we can add some instructions. They will be just visible in the back end of your system, not in the front end. And this is useful if you have multiple authors on your project and you have to describe this field. So in that case, it's quite obvious you have to enter the color, but maybe sometimes you need some description in addition. So next we have to define if this field is required or not. So if you say yes, this option has to be filled in in the back end in order to save the product. So let's just click yes for now. You can define a default value which will appear when creating a new post. You can also um, enter a placeholder text. Let's just put color there. 
we can define a prepend and the append. We're going to deal with this later on when we have a field where we need a, an append actually. We can define a character limit, in that case not necessary. And that's all for this field. So let's add our next field. We click add field again. And this time the name will be inches. Again, the field name is automatically inserted and we're going to choose a different field type. In that case, it's going to be a numerical value. So we're going to choose number. So again, the instructions we already talked about required as well. We're going to say yes. Default value is not necessary. Also no placeholder text. Well, why not? Let's just put inches here. But in that case, we want um, to have an append. So we want something to be displayed always after the value of this field. So right now we're talking about inches. So for example, in your product section, you will say this BenQ display has 22 as a numerical value. But well, 22, what exactly? What format? So we're going to put inches here. So after every value that is displayed on the front end, we have the term inches. We can also define a minimum and a maximum value. Not necessary in that case. We can define a step size. We also don't need this right now. And this is it for this field. Just click update so your field is saved. So now let's add the field resolution. So we're going to add the next field called resolution. Field name is inserted and this time the field type is going to be select. So in the back end, you're going to be able to select from multiple options. So again, no instruction necessary here. This is a required field. And now we can enter the choices every time on a new line. So this is about resolution. Let's just enter a few choices possible. So now we have two choices. We don't need a default value. Well, we don't want multiple values to be selected, right? Because there can be just one resolution for a screen. And the rest of the options, we can just keep them like this. So now let's enter a different kind of field. So we click again, add field. And this time it's going to be 144 Hertz capable question mark. So this is just, is this monitor able to have 144 Hertz or does it have it or not? So you can see again that the field name was already adjusted for the database. So we have an underscore instead of the blank. So we don't have to worry about this. And this time we're going to choose a different field type. And this is going to be true or false. So um, this can really just be a true or false option because either it has 144 Hertz or it doesn't. So we don't need any instructions. This is a necessary field. A message is not necessary and the rest of, of the options are going to remain as they are. So let's just click update again. So last but not least, let's add the field connections. Our field name is automatically added. And this time we're going to choose the field type checkbox because obviously there are multiple options for connections. And <clears throat> so, so actually you should be able to choose multiple ones and it's just one option. So let's first of all define it as required and just enter some choices. And do we want to allow custom values to be added? In that case, no, we only want the values that are displayed up here to be chosen in the products section. And also save custom should not be activated. The rest can actually stay as it is right now. 
So one last thing to say about the field section up here. So as I stated earlier, it's possible to filter products with the help of um, the field groups. So they are part of the filter. So, but not every um, field type can be part of the filter. So for example, uh, our option inches, which has the field type number can be filtered. The resolution option can also be filtered. The true or false option can also be filtered. And so this is possible, but for example, um, for our connections, this is not possible. So you cannot like tick um, multiple options inside the filter, but for those three in the middle, it's no problem. So next let's move on to the location section and here we can define rules. So what do you need those rules for? Basically here you define um, where the edit screens for the defined field group up here and the, the containing fields will be displayed. So let's just start with a simple example. So we already have the option post type here. We say is equal to just like in a math equation. And then we can say is equal product. So this basically says the field group will only be displayed within the post type products and not on pages and posts. So let's just add another end. So this is just going to add another rule. So post type is equal to product and now we don't choose post type, but we choose view again is equal to like in math and we say properties. So what does this say? So now we say post type is equal to product. Next condition is the view is equal to properties. So uh, when are the fields displayed on the front end might be a question. Um, so generally we distinguish between properties and tables. Properties in here table. If you choose properties, as we just did, the field will be displayed on the detail page next to the product image and in the list view of the output of products. If you choose tables, the field will only be displayed in the comparison tables in the front end. So we're going to choose properties for now. So now let's add another rule to our field group. So we already defined show this field group if the following rules um, are correct. And then we can add another rule group after the or sign. So let's just click add another group. We're going to say again, post type is equal to product and the view is equal to table. So this rule defines the field group to be displayed on the details page and the comparison table, for example, on your landing page. So let's just keep it like this for now. So next let's expand our two rule groups we defined here. So let's just think about what we're doing here. We defined monitor attributes, but on our website, like our project uh, we're working on here, we're, we're promoting various um, gaming gadgets, which include monitors, but also notebooks um, and other stuff. So, but we only want this field group to be applied to monitors. So somehow we have to tell the system, hey, don't apply this to any other product or product category than monitors. So um, let's just try to do that. So this is the next rule we're going to add here first. So we're gonna click end. And now we're going to choose post taxonomy because the, we want to limit this to a specific taxonomy. And we're going to choose here the gaming monitor department we defined earlier. So we did this for the first rule group. Let's do it for the second. Again, post taxonomy and the same gaming monitor. So after we defined our fields, 
and the location of our field group, let's take a look at our product section and how we can actually fill in the data for this field group. So we're going to click products and I just imported a gaming laptop to the system. And actually you can already see that our um, field group monitor attributes is displayed because I defined this product to be part of uh, the gaming monitor category. So the system realized, all right, this is what I'm searching for. So you can see a lot of things now, first of all, that we made all those fields required. So this is why we have this uh, red star there. And we're gonna add the color first, the number of inches, And now we have the checkbox, so we can choose the resolution. Let's stick to full HD. Yes, it has 144 Hertz and HDMI and display port. Let's just say this is the case. And we're going to click update for this product. And let's take a look at the front end. So as you can see, First of all, the first rule we defined that if the post type is equal to product and the view is properties, it sh this, should, th this whole list should be displayed next to the image. So this is the case. We have all our, our information here. The inches is displayed after uh, the value we inserted. Um, yeah, and that's already where we can find it on the product page. But we did define two different rule groups. So the first rule group was for the property field here um, on the single product page, but we also wanted this data to be displayed in a comparison table, for example, on our landing page. So let's go back to our landing page where I have this default comparison table. And the first product we see here is the gaming um, monitor I imported. And you can see that all this data is also now displayed in this list. So you can see it's it's a really practical feature. Like, of course, this now took some time to define all those rules, but after defining them, you can see how useful and easy this is because now you can import like, I don't know, 10 other uh, gaming monitors, like just fastly um, insert all this information and it will be beautifully displayed here.